We just have scratched the surface in the last hour of the amazing and horrific world of stalking. Um, and it's gotten into it like a grand level of stalking. Welcome back. This is Zeph Daniel. This is uh, our WWCR broadcast, also broadcasting on the Internet, also international podcast to come. All this is uh, uh, happening, and um, so we will, uh, we will be um, bringing this to you via high-quality podcast. And I guess I need to get right into it. And the first thing I need to do, the first thing I need to do is uh, talk about uh, uh, Dr. Hall. Uh, uh, John Hall has been our uh, guest. He's the author of A New Breed. Uh, he is an anesthesiologist in, uh, in Texas. Uh, he, he's fairly esteemed in, in the medical profession. He went through an extraordinary experience, which he documents in A New Breed. Uh, I have a link to that on the site. And it just gives a personal experience. And, and really what he's doing in this book is what we all need to be doing. Anyone who is stalked or targeted in any way needs to be documenting all of these things. So he documented it in a book. And I have something to say about that when, when, when we get them on. And then Dr. Robert Duncan uh, holds uh, degrees from Harvard and Dartmouth uh, and many other uh, universities. His expertise is directed energy, neurological weapons, psychological information warfare, um, he, his movie is called The Enemy Within Psychic Warfare and, and um, I, I haven't seen this book but he has another book called Hacking the Human Mind I believe uh, he is able to discuss uh, directed energy neurological weapons um, he's done work in the medical profession the medical field and, and actually really use of electronics in a positive way in keeping doctors out of harm's way so they can treat people that are, that are wounded in the field but, I mean, just a really fascinating uh, – he knows all about MK Ultra uh, when it began. The, the whole history of this, I guess he's kind of the go-to guy when you want to understand the uh, electronic um, warfare aspect of all this. Now, let me see who I've got on the air. Uh, if all goes well, I'll have both of our guests here, Dr. John Hall and Dr. Robert Duncan. Are you there, both of you? Hello. Hello. Uh, yes, Dr. Robert Duncan's here. Okay. Well, well, nice to, to hear you. I've just heard a lot of interviews with you, and, uh, and we don't have Dr. John Hall there. Is that correct? So I guess uh, let, let's see if we can uh, go ahead and fix that. I'm going to have to call him uh, live again. I thought we had him on the, uh, on the phone. So let me just go ahead and you know, <laughs> this is what happens. So WWCR, this is what happens. When you're putting out this kind of information, this is very popular among uh, Clear Channel. That's why I'm on Clear Channel right now. Okay, it looks like he's calling in, and I'm going to add to conference. Hello, uh, are you there? Yeah, hey, Jeff, how's it going? Oh, Dr. John. Okay, Dr. John yeah. Hall, Dr. Robert Duncan. Okay, these are the two heavyweights in this. This the most horrifying topic of all time. You know, electronic harassment, mind control, and to start off with, uh, a lot of people have heard you. I've heard your interview with uh, uh, Alex Ansari on, uh, you know, um, Coast to Coast on, uh, I'll just start with you, uh, Dr. Robert Duncan. Um, a lot of people know where all this came from, Operation Paperclip, the Nazis, the, you know, the, the kind of technological background. But so much is going on today, and um, I've heard a lot of your stuff from a couple of years ago, but now that we've had the Jared Lee Loeffner case, and I just want to ask you about this just right off the bat. I mean, is that potentially uh, a programmed uh, guy? Oh, <clears throat> absolutely. Uh, it's I, surprising that he even mentioned mind control in his, uh, in his blurb on YouTube. But uh, he very much fits the profile of a programmed assassin. And he was easily discredited in the news, as we saw, as someone who was crazy. Uh, and that will sort of explain away uh, what he did. And the motives behind it, his, his individual motives are going to be different from his controller's or handler's motives. And we can only surmise that Maybe they want to take away more power gun rights from the citizens. Well, what do you have? You have more crazy people using guns to, to uh, commit horrific crimes. You, you don't know what the political agenda might be, but he's certainly somebody who should be looked at closely as uh, being programmed. He talks about 
uh, neuro linguistic programming, which is a form of brainwashing um, mm-hmm. and and programming an assassin. And uh, in the old days, uh, uh, Dr. Ewan Cameron, when he was conducting experiments for the CIA, he uh, used two track loops uh, of really negative messaging while the patient was uh, undergoing electroshock and sleep therapy uh, and being given high doses of drugs. Uh, and he, he would uh, you know, pr- try to program a person through uh, this what's called neuro-linguistic programming. The Army uses it mm-hmm. uh, as well. Um, and it's a field of study. You can study at M- MIT. And it's how to control the mind through uh, repetitive statements. <clears throat> that it's uh, absolutely uh, you know horrifying to have seen that. But I mean, we we all knew that you know this guy. If you follow his history, he he hadn't been really violent. He'd been weird. He'd been an oddball. He'd been definitely someone you could target as somebody weak or um, you know that that would be able to do killing for somebody. You know, or it could be just we don't know the motives. But I mean, obviously, of all the people in a population, he would stick out as somebody to mess with if you were in the business of controlling people. Uh, Absolutely. And that's uh, one commonality that you can find. Uh, We did about 650 interviews of targeted people. And uh, one commonality uh, is that they're usually easily discredited in public. Um, and they they stick out as an oddball of some sort, uh, and so yeah, he would he would be an easy target. Yeah, for and, them. And and, and then you got to wonder the motive, and you know the the federal judge is shot. Um, but then you know other people can be targeted who are not a, an oddball. Doctor John Hall, enter please. And here you are. You were targeted, and uh, you're. You, you know, and there's nothing that I don't think uh, anything about you that would just signal a flag. Oh, come get this guy. He's easy or he's he's manipulatable. Let's let's try it on him. Well, not until I joined this fight anyway. Uh, you know, <laughs> once you once you start making noise about this technology and joining and, and combating this and certainly to some extent you're looked at as an oddball for believing it for one. Right. And especially in medical circles as a physician, you know, the you know, the take in the medical community right now is that, you know, you shouldn't be, you know, counseling these people as to being victims but should be referring them to a psychiatrist for a diagnosis. And that's the pretty much the pervasive thinking throughout most of the medical community. There's slowly more physicians coming around to see that there's a there's a problem and it's not necessarily mental illness now. But uh, I do agree with uh, Dr. Duncan and that most of the people that you see being victimized by this are already social outliers. Uh, there are already people that are uh, maybe somewhat involved in the drug counterculture uh, or, or have other, other factors in their lives that, that discredit them already before they ever mention a word about electronic harassment. Okay, but, it, you know, uh, case in point is your book, A New Breed. Now, I interviewed you right it, when it came out, pretty much. And at that time, there were just a few reviews on it. But you could tell, like, there, there were people that were really relieved that you wrote the book, okay, for one. I, for one, was in that category. But then there's others there that would just give you, like, one star and call you and, you know, basically try to defame you. You know, defamation, very big with these people. Defame you right on that Amazon site. And now I notice that because you hung in there, it's gone the other way, where you have a lot of really positive comments now. The public seems to be accepting your book. Well, you know, um, in my situation, it was actually my fiance who was really more the victim. Okay. Uh, and we did and we did identify the perpetrators in her case, and a lot of those first reviews uh, were actually traced back to some of the perpetrators themselves uh, that definitely wanted the book discredited and wanted me discredited, and went to some great lengths to try to accomplish that, and uh, luckily uh, did not. But uh, you know, and. The one good thing about Robert Duncan coming out with his book, uh, Soul Catcher, Volume Two, mm-hmm. you know, my book, I go over the. the te- we're we're pretty much of the same mind on how the technology works. My book was more just a, a story from a a credible person that yes, this is going on. You know, his book goes into detail on how it's done uh, and is, has really been a, a godsend for the victim community. I, I'm kind of playing catch up here with everything. I need to get that book ASAP, Doctor Duncan. Did you get? Uh... 
uh, harassed for writing that book? Uh, no, I actually haven't. Uh, it's been <laughs> very positive feedback. Uh, Get that book, it, it almost seems like more public a person is, uh, more they uh, will, you know, stand back because they don't want it to be too obvious. Uh, but, but I haven't had any problems uh, with the publication. And in your introduction, you said it was called Hacking the Human Mind. It, the title actually changed. Okay. It's called Project Soul Catcher, Secrets of Cyber and Cybernetic Warfare Revealed. And the, the reason that I called it uh, cybernetics, and the, the field uh, in psychophysics or neuropsychology um, in, in cybernetics comes from a Greek word meaning the art of steering. Cybernetics is about having a goal and taking action to achieve that goal. Knowing whether you have reached the goal requires feedback, a concept that comes from cybernetics. And that in, evolved into the Latin word for governor. And uh, cybernetics as a process operating in nature has been around for a long time, but uh, in society, uh, We've heard it used first by Plato to refer to government. In modern times, the term cybernetics, there was a book written by uh, um, Mr. Wiener uh, called The Cybernetics in 1948, a year after the formation of the CIA. Mm -hmm. His uh, subtitle is important because it connects our control systems with communication. And <clears throat> that... Uh, and he also points out in 1948 that, um, that both artificial systems and biological systems can have purpose. And this was a scary concept back then. So that, that's the idea behind cybernetic. Cyber has to do with uh, cyber warfare techniques, hacking computers. Now, there's a kernel, in, uh, and you can still find this paper in the military literature of the Air Force, uh, that the mind has no firewall. Uh, and so the idea is uh, that hacking into computer systems and hacking into human beings, individual minds or society's minds, the collective conscious, uh, use the same techniques and trickery. So the book tries to cover all of those and get into details of some of the systems uh, that are currently out there. The, the first stalker that, uh, the, 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 where I became aware of, of the stalking was through the Scientologists. They seem to be experts at that, and, and they're really into this whole cybernetics thing and the mind and manipulation of the mind as well. Uh, they are, and, and it's, I, I tried to investigate them a little more thoroughly and did a sort of a comparative religion analysis of my own. Uh, but for some reason, in all the literature, the word CIA and Scientology seem to be used together. And so I don't... <laughs> yeah. I don't okay, know I got you. They, well, I'm just aware of... What I, what I mean by that is that the whole gaslighting techniques, you know, that were, uh, you know, like Stasi techniques, uh, mm -hmm. have been employed by the Scientologists. And, and um, I, I'll share an incident later. We have a question... Uh, coming from the uh, chat room, is this type of programming or mind control, in this type of programming or mind control, can, can they uh, overcome inhibitions uh, in people, or is there some type of pre-programming or pre-screening required for it to work? I, I'm not sure I understand the question. You mean, yeah. you mean can, you, can they use this to, so you overcome your inhibitions uh, uh, against your will? I think that would be a better question. Okay, and, and that's the general question of, of hypnosis. Now, this is uh, one of the CIA's most famous programs uh, that was leaked during the Frank Church investigations in Congress was uh, a remote hypnotic inner cerebral control. So it's a, uh, a weapon of, of detrimental hypnosis. And... If you talk to some experts, they say under hypnosis, you cannot be forced to do anything that's against your very primitive programming, uh, your morality, your ethics. But obviously, they've gone past that. Uh, the whole point of some of the CIA programs were to create split personality assassins so that they can commit a crime or commit their or finish their mission 
and uh, then be able to pass a polygraph, but they didn't do it. Uh, so, uh, yes, they can make you, uh, can change your inhibitions, and that's the whole point of most of these mind control studies, to make the person do things that were normally against their principles. Yeah, and it's... But you know, you know, go ahead, Jeff. You know, Jeff, but on, on another point, though, it does seem like we're seeing... Um, more individuals that they're made, at least it seems to me that there is a subset of the population that does seem to be a little more resistant to the control mechanisms than others. And, um, and uh, you know, my personal opinion is that maybe that is uh, some of the group that's being avidly harassed uh, because maybe they, you know, they, they don't respond to the control mechanisms as well as, as most. Exactly. I think that's an excellent point. So they would be targeted more, you're saying? They, they would, if they know they can do it uh, to uh, a lot, 80% of the population, that's not of their interest. They want to focus on that 20%, what makes them resistant. And that can be both used uh, in analysis of, uh, in terms of warfare, how you make the culture resistant to these techniques in case we get in a war between Russia and China using just psychotronics, uh, or it can be that they want to improve the weapons effectiveness, which is the majority, in my opinion, of the cases, uh, and what better targets than those that may show resistance to mind control techniques. Okay, so those of you who are strong, especially if you have strong faith, I think uh, you see people with strong faith, and they, they're able to discern and this is another big question, the voice of God from the fake voice of God or the beamed-in voice of God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's the, the problem that, on the one hand, faith does provide some a solid foundation for a person not to stray from, uh, but these new voice of God weapons that uh, you, you can imagine how useful and more now that would be, you know, all it commands you to lay down your arms, and you hear this inside your head. Right. And, of course, it's the way God would talk to you. Um, and so, in a way, faith is a double-edged sword. It can make people believe they're talking to an angel, demon, a god, uh, mm -hmm. using these weapons, or it can also ground them more make sure that they're not tricked into doing the devil's work, so to speak. I got to warn them every day out there because we are, uh, you know, as much a spiritual broadcast as anything. But, uh, you know, today we're, we really want to get into the, you know, this, we really want to bring people up to date as to what they can do so they can then prepare themselves. I've been on all kinds of sites lately where I've seen things like tinfoil blankets and, and tinfoil hats, believe it or not. And, you know, I, and I, maybe it'll help, but I think in a way, um, Gosh, I see a lot of people going to great lengths, almost insane lengths, to keep this stuff out of their rooms, out of their apartments, out of their houses. You know, it can drive a person to, 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 to doing things that make him look mentally unstable. And that's the problem, Jeff. A tinfoil hat, the only thing it's going to help you get is a psychiatric diagnosis. <laughs> and, and, and there are other sites that say, look, if you've got this problem, if you're being electronically harassed or, you know, gang stalked on any, on any level, whether with, with, from, you know, other human beings to electronic, it all kind of goes together. That, I mean, because I have been a victim of this myself and I've been public about it. But there's two schools of thought. One, you be public about it, and that's a good way to get yourself tossed in the, in the loony bin. Of course, I've already been tossed in there, so it's, it's, like, it's, it's like that was – you know, when I, first was, was hara when I first became aware of organized stalking, I was like 17 years old, okay? And, um, you know, it was happening then in a more concrete way. I'd say more the gaslighting type way. Okay, and two times. One time, I wound up in an overdose in a in uh, the hospital at, on uh, where I was given LSD and um, and phenobarbital at, after the you know I was flipping out from the LSD and then phenobarbital and then wound up in a coma and my heart actually stopped. I came back, but it was and who was doing it? These were people at uh, in the in the school that I was going to, and they and some 
kids that were there as students and one particular teacher. This had to do with – it's a long story. I can't go into it now. I'm another time for that testimony. I don't want to take away from this show. The point is, is you know, it, it happened to me, and I guess I was targeted for death. I was targeted to be in the mental hospital and then death. You know what I'm saying? I had both – you know, I'm suicidal. I was listed as a suicide. And then actually in the city where I, you know, grew up in LA, uh, I went back years and years later, had a long history of, of, you know, having to be dealt with by shrinks and all kinds of, you know, I mean, you know, I was a complete mess. But anyway, when I got back there and I ran into say an old friend, they said, you're supposed to be dead. I thought you were dead. We all knew you died then. So after that, the, the rumor went around that I had died. I didn't make it out of that uh, hospital. Okay, that's pretty... You know, I get, I, get, I get a lot of emails from, from victims who are correspondents that, that think they're being targeted with the purposes of death. And yes, some TIs do commit suicide to get away from their torture. But all in all, and, and I'll get, we'll get Dr. Duncan's take on this, I yeah. really don't think that anyone is being specifically targeted with the expectation of them being killed. And mainly because this is experimentation and, and dead guinea pigs aren't good to experiment mm -hmm. on. In my case, I don't think it was it, back then. It was, you know, it's really interesting. The other thing is that I knew all about, you know, uh, a Dr. West because I had to do <laughs> back then. You know what I mean? I mean, he was kind of part of this whole plot. But anyway, that was a long time oh, ago. Yeah. It was a long time ago. He was the head of the neuropsychiatric or NPI at UCLA at the time. That's right. Jolie West, he was very much involved in all of this. Yeah, and one of, you know, so it, it, it's another story. I wanted to throw it out there to get your take on it. I've had, you know, it, it, it's, it's, um, it's a horrible thing. I want to ask you one other thing uh, for either one of you. There was a time in 2004, I believe, I was getting voice to skull, and I know who was d doing it. It was someone doing it in a nearby ha house. And it was the um, the Navy fight song, and and uh, the guy worked for Naval Intelligence or was reti just retired from supposedly from Naval Intelligence. Do you find that to be uh, of any significance? Uh, here, here's my take on that. Uh, almost everybody that I've interviewed has voiced the skull believes that it's coming from their neighbors. Okay, and and so just. Using some street smarts, I would say that that's a trick. They want you to believe that it's a localized system. Uh, but while you're getting it, I bet you could jump on an airplane and fly randomly to another location, and you'd still be getting the voice of the skull. Um, so I think the, the neighbor is uh, at okay. the point of trickery. And that it's, it's not a localized weapon like that. It's just a guess. I mean, I guessed, you know, that was my guess. It wasn't that. And I'll tell you this, I couldn't get away from it. And it went on for about, you know, a couple of weeks, maybe a little longer. And then it went away and I haven't had it since. But I'm just saying that was pretty, uh, pretty bad because like I say, it kind of, it was pretty loud. You know what I mean? It was, it wasn't like, um, you know, it was very annoying put it that way and distracting and you know if, if this went on day after day it would drive you completely nuts oh yeah well, i've, heard, some, I've heard from multiple victims in new mexico that are hearing that hearing music and hearing the navy fight song specifically so i think that is part of an operation that's being done there wow okay thank you thank you very much uh, dr john for that because uh, <laughs> i've i carried that since 2004 and i didn't know what to you know i didn't understand it i, I you know i there, there is a weapon system uh, that uh, Sierra Nevada Corporation is coming out with and probably already has. Uh, it's called Medusa, and it's for crowd control, and it uses the microwave hearing effect mm -hmm. at near ranges. And uh, basically, you can't plug your ears. You can't stop it. The, the sound is being transmitted directly uh, to the inner ear through small heating vibrations of the brain. And this was written up uh, probably about four years ago that they were developing such a, a weapon. And, and there is one colonel that says, if you can transmit voices into the enemy's head, I will find a way to talk them to their death. Uh, so you can imagine what wow. a useful weapon system that would be. Okay. Now, how, either one, how do they, 
we, we understand, you know, part of it is to choose stronger victims, you know, but, but when they want to experiment on this stuff, how do they choose their targets? Go ahead, Dr. Hall. Well, I mean, I'll give you my opinion on it, and I think it's pretty much random. I mean, if you look back historically at the way this research started, most of it was done through front companies um, or, or masked as legitimate research through universities. But at least having identified some of the perpetrator groups, you know, with our research, what it appears to me is that the technology is being released to certain, you know, if you want to call them criminal groups or people that are being allowed to have the technology with basically a carte blanche open-ended invitation to victimize whoever they want to victimize for whatever reason. And I think that's how the powers that be that are actually um, taking down the data on how well it works are achieving their um, their randomness to their experimentation. I, I think the the individual groups that are they're being allowed to possess it are being told, you know, victimize whoever you want to victimize. Because if you look across the board, I mean, it's it's certainly random. I mean, there's not you know, it's not one particular racial group. It's not one particular political group. I mean, most of it are common people, housewives. I mean, it's not just whistleblowers and, and political activists. It's, you know, most of the victims are just everyday middle-class people. Okay. That, I have another question here. Um, can they also hear your thoughts while they are in, implanting their programming or while they're beaming you with something? Can they hear, do they get feedback? Absolutely. That's part of the technology that makes it so unbelievable. It's during uh, hive mining, it's called, uh, that uh, the very thought processes are bi-directional. Uh, and so they, they, you have to create a feedback loop in order for uh, this technology to, to work. So the answer is a solid yes. Okay, they can read my thoughts then uh, to a certain extent uh, during that process of beaming me. They're going to get back some kind of data from me, whether and, and it would be involuntary on my part. That's right. That, that's right. In fact, you can even uh, probe someone's dreams to get a more uh, subconscious uh, profile of their psychology. Okay, that is truly um, right. horrific. Okay. okay. That, it, well, you can understand why this is so top <laughs> secret. Uh, uh, the very concept of free will is destroyed. We've been debating this for thousands of years. And to have that, that argument finalized, well, all of Western philosophy, and from crime and punishment to religion, mm -hmm. relies on this concept of free will. They can't just announce it and then say, oh, by the way, we've been running torture experiments on people all around the world. So they're going to be sure to keep this classified okay, for well, as long as we can. All right, let's look at the news. Uh, Egypt, could they intensify the riots with the, that gear that, that they have? Absolutely. And in fact, it's a, a, a major war strategy is to try to get other countries to fight each other. Uh, and so you want to intensify the fighting to, to wage war of attrition. And then, of course, you could use a political maneuver, say that we're going to send in troops to occupy them to help stop the fighting. Uh, mm. There are a whole bunch of reasons you'd want to do that. In 1970s, there was an Army intelligence officer that came forward and said the Russians were beaming us with uh, a cyclotronic signal all over, and we started sending the same one back to them, but the signal was meant to subdue the population, keep them from becoming violent, uh, and calm them down as if we were the aggressors. Uh, so it can be used in either form, to calm a country's population down uh, or to incite violence as well. Uh, another uh, colonel said that uh, with this particular radio frequency, he could uh, instill white hot anger in the subject. Well, that, that would be proof that they already have that technology um, and have been, and of course would be using it in a warfare arena. Yeah, and every, everywhere else. So could they do something like, uh, uh, I read a term, mental rape? And the idea of one of these crimes would be in, in that kind of environment, you know, used with uh, a satellite with, for audio and visual. Could uh, scientists, writers, uh, military people, et cetera, have their intellectual property like their plans or their, or their theories or whatever, their, their papers, be stolen? Oh, yeah. 
and yeah, uh, the, and the, that's the another problem with this technology. Uh, in the last chapter of my book, I go through a lot of the current laws and how they have to be rewritten because the very idea of intellectual properties is now uh, defunct. Yeah. If you can steal someone's property, although I think they were probably in the term of mental rape, uh, thinking of more severe actions. I mean, literally, uh, th there is one simulated rape from an interview of a woman that I did. Uh, and so you can cause the same mental harm, trauma to the psyche in a simulated fashion as you can in a physical fashion. Okay, uh, folks out there. And we, and we, and we are seeing that, Zeth. I, I, I oh. have heard from a lot of victims, female victims, that do get what they call a, a simulated rape or, you know, basically, you know, their genitals made to tingle or hurt uh, while they're being um, hit with, uh, you know, sexual assault images at the same time. That's a very yeah. common complaint among female victims. Yeah, we used to be called, you know, incubus, succubus type of uh, demonic uh, activity. Now it's become electronic. You know, in other words, this, all, all that sort of uh, the stuff we would call spiritual warfare has really gone high tech. <laughs> and um, it, it's really, you know, it, it really is horrifying. But, let, okay, this idea of mental rape is on, is on the rise. Does that mean then that there are necessarily military ops behind the scenes? Could there be rapists in charge of this technology, you know, or having access to it then, just like common criminals? Can they operate these satellites? You have to define criminal. I, I think okay. many segments of our government operates as, <laughs> as criminals and above the law. Uh, no, the, under the George Bush administration, uh, John, you wrote up his torture memos, and it included uh, rape and other things in there that as long as we as a country do it without taking pleasure in it, then it's not considered part of torture. So I, my guess is that they're getting around the law that way. Um, and no, I don't think the common, uh, you know, criminal has access to this. I, I think they're quite trained. Okay, because see, there's a there's a okay there's a little debate on that because because there's been some uh, some information you know out there that uh, you know the criminal groups have been able to access somehow through their computers by getting hacked codes or whatever, these satellites, and using them for their own uh, nefarious activities. But you're saying that's probably unlikely. It's, it's unlikely. Yeah. The CIA has hired uh, the mafia in the past to try to kill Sutton Castro. They're very much uh, utilize each other's networks. Uh, but I don't see what the common criminal has to gain by wasting their time torturing, you know, random people, basically. John, well, and, and what's your other, take on Well, my take on it is kind of like what you said. I mean, it depends on how you define criminal. And one of the things that worries me uh, in society right now is we're at a point now where we have more people in the private sector with top-secret clearances, you know, that most of our intelligence services are being farmed out now, being contracted out to private companies. These are people that got their training in one government agency or another, still maintaining their clearance, but working for, you know, uh, for private intelligence gathering companies. One of them is based here out of San Antonio called Mantec, mm -hmm. and it's well, well known that they did purchase Igor Smirnoff's uh, technology uh, through a third-party company, and they're based right here. So I mean, it's, a, it's a real fine line between what, what you call, you know, legitimate experimentation or experimentation by the government and, and criminals accessing it, because these people are still criminals, but they're criminals that have a top-secret clearance. So... That that end of it, I can see where you could say, it, yes, it has gotten into criminal hands, but these are criminals that were, were government trained and still have clearances. Yeah, a guy like Adolf Hitler today, where he used to hire uh, Tibetan remote viewers to go in and uh, try to get information on the enemy or invade and try to kill them remotely. Just think how much fun he'd be having with all this if he were around today. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's... it's uh, it, it's, it's it's just it, it is, my feeling is we're at the beginning, not not toward the end. What do you think? It, 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 to me, it seems like this is just gearing up more and more. I mean, I started dealing with this subject, you know, the technology of it, a few years ago, and over 
all of those years, every year thereafter, it increased. And are we still increasing? And how do you see the future of uh, psychotomy? Yeah, absolutely. This is a technology that's not going away. Look, one of the whole points uh, of writing the book that I did, and I have another one coming out uh, that gets into the physics and, and details of uh, the sciences of mind control and cybernetics. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a technology that's going to be more disruptive to the human race and culture than uh, you know the internet, airplanes, or cars combined. Uh, it's uh, it's not going away. It's actually a species changer, uh, and oh. so they, it's uh, unfortunately this is our future, and it's uh, the whole point is to get it out of the wrong hands. Right now. Well, we always use technology for warfare and spying and, and an advantage first. Then the technology can be used for good. And there are many medical purposes for the technology. Technology is neutral. And it's just right now it's being used in such an evil way that we, we are really afraid of the technology. But there can always be controls over it, uh, like nuclear weapons. It can be regulated. But, okay. uh, it's, yeah, it's uh, not going away. Every year it's increased, but now every year I have more and more, uh, I'm in contact with more and more TIs, targeted individuals. And um, just after, uh, uh, John, after we did our last uh, interview, I met some, some more that were coming forth. And uh, then I became aware that there are networks out there of TIs, of survivors. And like you said, from every walk of life, basically old, young, you know, the age doesn't seem to matter either. Uh, Okay, if someone finds out or thinks that they're a targeted individual, what what should they do? What's the first step? Well, they should contact uh, uh, one of the organizations out there. Uh, Freedom from Covert Harassment and Surveillance. Uh, join some support groups. Get some information before they act. Because if they're going to go down the same pathway... A trickery that almost every TI goes through. They go to their local police. Well, the police, they don't know anything about it. They're not going to do anything. They'll go to the FBI. They'll get the same response. Uh, and so they need to know what works and what doesn't so they don't fall for uh, the common traps. That's my advice. Okay, uh, John. I would, give, and I, would give the, I would give the same advice, uh, Zeph, because... One thing, having, you know, um, Dr. Duncan and I both have spoke to multiple victims, and, and, and there's, a, you know, there's a certain set of programs that they use with each individual, and each individual goes down the same destructive, self-destructive pathways yeah. when they're exposed to these. And, and one of the first is that it's coming from the neighbors, so you do something crazy to your neighbors and get arrested and diagnosed, and then, you know, once you're further victimized by the psychiatric, psychiatric community, then you're, you're really heading downhill. And then the second one is that there's got to be a chip in me. And, and I, get, I get emails from people every day that, you know, well, the only way this could be happening to me is if I'm chipped. That's, that's a, actually another falsehood. Are we finding chips okay. in people? Sure we are. Is it a necessity? Absolutely not. Okay, so that brings new light to the whole abduction phenomenon because, you know, it seems to me these two things are related. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, we'll start with uh, you, uh, Dr. Duncan. What do you think? Uh, yeah, there's no doubt that uh, the, the government started using cover stories, alien cover stories, uh, many years ago. They found them to be effective. Uh, and so these abductions that have been reported even in early in the 60s are most definitely related to this government experimentation uh, program. And they've found a way to automate it and literally ramp it up. And I think that's one reason why we're seeing more TIs. It could be also that more TIs have access to the Internet, and that's uh, uh, helping people get together and, and share notes. Um, but it, it does look like it's being ramped up. Yeah, and, and um, you know, to me it looks like it's going more toward a societal or, or a large, or, uh, you know, span of people you, you know, um, crowd control, the thought control of a nation type of thing. I mean, that's right. It doesn't, it's not going to just be, you know, controlling this one and that one individually. It almost seems like it's got to go nationwide or even worldwide. 
you know, this is more effective than normal propaganda. You can affect <laughs> people while they're sleeping and uh, working. Um, they don't even need to shut off their televisions to get uh, programming. So every country in the world, of course, uh, their goal is to herd, shepherd their people into one conformed thinking pattern. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can look at maybe terrorism as being uh, a, a milestone to get people to maybe give up the rights, freedom of thought. we got to read everyone's brain print just to make sure they're not a terrorist. Um no. So, yeah, I, I think it's definitely heading in that direction. Yeah, yeah. once it gets out of the, uh, you, you know, the, the sort of beta testing stage, it's going, you know, it's going mainstream. You know, it's it's the pre-crime, that whole uh, Steven Spielberg movie. Um, what was that called, Trish? Uh, it wasn't called uh, pre-crime. Minority Report. Right, Minority Report. Okay. To me, you know, and then they were using psychics. We'll just replace those psychics with te- high technology. Mm-hmm. And and and, exactly. and then that's the same movie, you know. And I, and I think some of these movies are kind of prophetic, in a way, as to um, you know just making predictions of where, especially science fiction. And it looks like this is one pathway they're following. But in the end of that movie, we might recall that you know the technology was deemed evil. Ultimately, it didn't help society when they destroyed that whole place and uh, and they destroyed the Department of Pre Crime. Um, you, you know, that was the solution. In other words, the good guys won then. But that, as you say, that's not going to be the solution here because this technology is not going to go away like in that movie. It's going to yeah. increase. It's, yeah, there, there's no way this is going away. The investments, uh, once you understand the, the how large of a sample set, how much human suffering they've allowed to put into this, developing it, uh, the number of dollars, uh, there's no way they're going to give this up. And this, this is here to stay. And the, you know, the, the people in control that are, I'm sure, so seduced by its power that they rather see the human race go away before this does. Well, as the big new Brzezinski said, it's easier to uh, kill a million people than control them. I guess when he said that, uh, he wasn't taking all this into account. <laughs> And you know what? And there, and there is good. There, this technology is not entirely bad. I mean, I, look, looking at things from a medical point of view, right. um, you know, the the ability to maybe help with addiction, you know, help with some medical problems with it. Look at the Terry Schiavo case. You know, to determine whether that woman had conscious thought or not. You know, the doctors were having to look at EEG readings that you know are that harken back to the 1950s. You know, a bunch of intelligible squiggly lines on paper that that really are, are just about unreadable. They could have put this system on her and knew if she had conscious thought within minutes. I mean, so there there is some good things that can come out of this technology, just as Dr. Duncan said, it's not being used in that manner. Okay. Um, right. I, I understand there's a positive aspect, but I think in a way we have to go through like a trial by fire as a, as a culture. In other words, we're going to go through this ugly time first. And uh, where we come out on the end of this ugly time, you know, it's anyone's guess. But those of you who are TIs, uh, again, uh, you know who you are. If I guess, can I say this? If you think you are, you might, you might be. And, and what are the statistics on that for people who think they are? How many of them turn out to actually be targeted individuals? I'm sure it's a gray scale. Uh, when you say targeted, that it's often black and white. Uh, I'm sure they're, they're in the experimentation, uh, there are people we found that just get B2K, and the B2K is only positive, although that's a, a rare case. Uh, usually it's always negative messaging. Um, some people get torture. Uh, some people get both. Uh, and it runs the gamut. So you can imagine uh, it's, it's, uh, if you're trying to test a new drug, uh, you want a random sample uh, and you want to uh, pull out all the different variables um, and it's called discriminant function analysis. And so you want to test it on different people in different types of variations of the hypnosis, of the mind control, of the stocking, and to see what is most effective. 
Mm-hmm. Well, the, you know, again, you know, people that have if, – if you don't think those thoughts are your thoughts, you know, and you keep getting these negative thought patterns or even, you know, like you say, positive thought patterns. So, you know, I had a vision from God. I had, I had uh, you know, I have all this going on or I have a new – um, pathway, I suddenly, you know, or I want to commit suicide or something. I mean, do you go to the suicide group and then you realize it's not your thought, but you feel like you're being beamed. Do you go to the suicide support group or do you go to the, uh, TI support group? I mean, if you go to the suicide support group and you say, I'm getting all these thoughts beamed into my head, you know, they're going to think you're a schizophrenic right off the bat. Oh yeah. <clears throat> you'll be labeled immediately. Yeah. And that's a given. And then you'll, you'll be given drugs that may or may not help. Uh, so that's a difficult question. You, the, the victims that I've studied, they they almost all got the full-on testing, so there was no doubt that they were TIs. Um, mm-hmm. So people that may just be getting brought into the program, well, maybe if they know too much, the program won't be effective, and they'll give up on them. So in these radio shows and books are very important, at least in my mind, to spoil and ruin a lot of their data that they're gathering. Okay. Well, you know, this is, uh, unfortunately for some of you, this may be a painful topic, but, you know, you need to get the information. There is help out there. These are, um, you know, groups, and I suppose they have to be self-policing because there could be infiltrators into those groups, those support groups for being a TI. If you feel they are on the Internet, you can get information. Uh, We had some, I've got a couple of resources here, and let me see what you guys think about this. Uh, freedom from, well, it's freedomfchs.com. Freedom from... Um, Co- covert harassment and surveillance. Okay, that would be a good one. Raven1.net, I guess she was, uh, Eleanor White was the was really the first one I ever read that, you know, had, had uh, even dealt with this subject. And, you know, uh, mindjustice.org is another one. Americans, uh, thought control, thought control, mind control, disinformation, and other naughty things by Moss David Posner. I guess that's a, some sort of report. Microwave harassment and, con- and mind control experimentation uh, and federation against mind control Europe. Another one is the uh, study of uh, U.S. intelligence community human rights violations and continuing research in electromagnetic weapons. That's a PDF document, and I want to know, uh, Dr. Duncan, where can we get your uh, books? Amazon? Amazon Amazon.com, Secrets of Cyber and Cybernetic Warfare. The title is Project Soul Catcher. Okay, I'm going to have those links and the pictures of those books. When when we produce this show as a podcast, I will have all of that. You click on the picture, you'll go right to the uh, link. You can can go there and get the book. Um, Otherwise, is there... any other bookseller, I'm sure, would have. If, if you don't have yeah. internet, you can just call up whoever you, you know, go to your, you know, Borders bookstore or go to your uh, Barnes & Noble or one of those, and you can order it there, right? That's correct, yeah. Okay, you can get any book anytime. There's no excuse not to, not to get a book. Is there an e-book available? Uh, right now, no, not, okay. not for my books. Uh, I am thinking of uh, putting it on Kindle, but uh, it's not on there yet. Okay. Now, what's, now do you have a website? I, I've looked, and I found one that was all Chinese. The, <laughs> <laughs> but I, could, I, I can't understand this. <laughs> there, there actually is a Chinese uh, support group uh, called Peace Pink, uh, and they, they have their electromagnetic uh, uh, groups uh, experimentation groups there, uh, support groups. There's one in Russia as well. I do not have a website. I don't have time to maintain it. I know Dr. Hall does. I know, and I've got that on the site. That's uh, satweapons.com, right? Dot, dot com. And if anybody has any questions about Dr. Duncan's book, you can email me through that website, and I will can certainly pass on the information on where to get his book. It is a must-read to understand right. this technology. Um, you know, I'm a medical doctor compared to him. I'm definitely a, a fat girl at this prom. So, um, I mean, if you <laughs> oh, really now, want come to on, that's the being me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, look, uh, I need both. Okay, I need the new breed. I need a, I need a new breed. Uh, Satellite Terrorism America by Dr. John Hall, and I need to also read Dr. Duncan to get 
the whole, you know, by Dr. Robert Duncan to get the entire, you know, the other side. I need both sides of this, the, the personal side, the technological side, where these uh, – and also, Dr. Uh, John Hall, you are involved with targeted individuals, with helping them, because I know quite a few uh, that have they've contacted you and gotten help that way. Yeah, I, I work with a lot of people, at least trying to get them to go down some of the same pathways that we've talked about. Uh, because invariably they think it's their upstairs neighbor or the neighbor across the street. And no. uh, it's mainly trying to explain the technology to them so they don't do something to victimize themselves. In my case, the neighbor moved away after, after I prayed that they would move away. <laughs> but, but it didn't stop after that, did it? Um, no, it didn't stop. Uh, it didn't stop, but then it did stop, you know. And then I had somebody actually email me and say he was doing it from Australia, but he was lying. I knew that. I, I got the impression that he was just making, because I'd mentioned it on a uh, broadcast. See what I mean? So someone steps up and go, I was doing that to you. And he apologized for, for having sent uh, those kind of messages. But then I, what I realized later was, now this was, a, this was a definite thing. Just like you turn on a light switch, that you turn on your stereo or TV, it was like that. No, but again, it's been many years. I've been left alone. So am I free Either one. Am I free now that I've been left alone? I haven't had that experience for a few years. Or I mean, Time will tell. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I, I've heard of other people that have uh, been released for a time, and then uh, then they're brought back into the project. So don't give up the fight just because you may be free. <laughs> well, I'm trying to give. What I'm trying to do with my situation is I'm trying to bring, you know, logic to, I'm trying to bring a better understanding just for, you know, per, this is a personal show for me because I'm trying to understand because I know that a lot of the time um, I've, you know, been quiet, you know, I, and I, at one point, you know, I was pretty wild on, on, on go, I went out live on the internet in 2002 and that probably saved my life. But, I mean, I was pretty out there in terms of explaining stuff that was happening to me. And one guy that was a listener, he, he was a doctor, and um, he gave me a clean bill of health and, a, I mean, a clean bill of mental health and then signed it as a legal document because he said, you might need this if they try to throw you in the loony bin. So, obviously, I made this, the, you know, the mistake, but I didn't know what else to do. I was all alone. I didn't know what else to do. So I went forward on the Internet. Uh, thinking that you know that's what I should do, and, um, and and nothing happened to me. In other words, I survived. Obviously, you know. And well, and that's the fight we're trying to fight right now too, is to educate the psychiatric community that this technology does exist. Because at the at the very top, uh, American Psychiatric Association, they they damn well know that this technology exists. At the community level, the psychiatrist that you're going to be sent to in your hometown probably is largely ignorant of the technology and is just going to fulfill the requirements of the dsm 4 to give you a diagnosis. And that's, that's up to us to change that through education. Well, they, you know, when they diagnosed me, I had everything in the, you know, I had uh, uh, all kinds of like paranoia and, and borderline personality and all kinds of terms. You know, that just explained that I couldn't really function in society because, you know, I, you know, I was getting you know, interrupted, if you will. <laughs> you know? But anyway, I've also tried to understand how this works together with the demonic and the satanic. Because there are, there are people, I think we would all agree, walking around as programmed, it seems, by demons. You know, they're, they're just not the same as who they were. You know, and they're in need of an exorcism. I mean, what say you, uh, either one, about exorcism today and, and deliverance? Well, I, I, I can't uh, talk to the spiritual level, but there is a weapon system discussed in my book called Satan. And oh, it no. uh, stands for silence is fascination through adapting networks. So you can imagine all the, uh, you have a behavioral modification tool a uh, weapon, uh, you can have dial-in lethality uh, simply by manipulating the humans themselves to hurt themselves. Uh, and it uses all the best medical discoveries except in the negative. You know, fire can be used to heat, keep people warm and heat food, uh, kill bacteria, or it can be used to burn down villages. And so this is an extreme example of weaponization of the medical profession. Okay. 
Well, so it, it, if again, if anyone is is feels they're targeted, there is uh, there are support groups. Do you think these support groups are legit? How do you know that? How okay? Here's a good question. How would you know something is wrong with a support group? Uh, it's there are many things wrong with <laughs> most of the support groups, and that's and that's just natural dysfunctionality. Okay. People are on edge. People are being tortured. Um, and yes, maybe you'll find a, an infiltrator who is trying to stir the pot for no reason. But I found that the support groups uh, they can be helpful. You get information, but you can get sucked into them, and it, they become. Uh, uh, infighting, and, mm. and unfortunately, you're bringing together people of all walks of life under duress. You're going to have a lot of that infighting. Well, I don't mind that. What I mind is that you know it, it, it becomes another experiment. That uh, in in a way, it is. It's uh, uh, what they study uh, in the intelligence agencies is uh, how to develop relationships. This is published in DARPA as one of the projects with lifelong uh, uh, understanding of uh, the development of relationships as well as how to disrupt human networks. So okay. it, you can imagine, you know, that, yes, they, they probably are part of an experiment. Well, all right. Look, we're just about out of time. Uh, again, well, D- Dr. Robert Duncan, I thank you so much for being here. You don't have a website. The, the books, I will have those links, Amazon.com uh, and Dr. John Hall. Uh, as always, you know, Dr. John Hall also is a broadcaster and, and has, you know, you, you've got a whole venture there, but you can contact him. I'll get more links up on uh, our show so they can follow your shows as well. You've done a lot, Dr. Hall. You've done a lot in terms of, uh, you know, being an activist out there. And, you, you know, and a lot of people really look up to you and they, they're just really thankful that you came forward. And, but you are, a, a, you know, a leader among men, as it were. <laughs> you know, you're out there bringing awareness to this. But we're all out of time. I thank you both for being here. And God yeah, bless thank you. Thank you for having me. And God bless right. both of you, okay? And I'm going to be, God you know, bless. catching up. Thank you so much. I've got to let you, these guys go, and that's, uh, that's it on our interview. And, um, well, what do you think? Pretty, uh, pretty amazing, huh? Zeph Daniel, and I have no time to explain anything. I just have to get out of here. Uh, we love you. We're praying for you, and we'll see you next time, okay? All right? Until we meet again next week, you short waivers and you people with uh, iTunes, uh, get in there. It's uh, The link is right on our site. ZephDaniel.com will take you there. Uh, we are all out of time. And uh, hey, look, uh, chin up. There's help. Uh, these guys are very brave going forward with what they're doing. But uh, we today we brought you pretty much the, the cutting edge of uh, what it is. Okay? It is what it is. Okay.